Yo, 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 what is going on everybody? Alex Pandrea here. Today we are going to go over some card magic tips for you all. And I hope uh, you like them. I'm having a great day, so I messed that one up, didn't I? Huh? I'll pick that up, I'll get ready to go, and let's get right into it. Let's do it. Let's just go. All right, guys, I'm here with my boy Pan Pandrea. If you don't know Pandrea, he comes from the island of Las Vegas, Hawaii, Romania, and everywhere else he stays. Because that's how we live in. <laughs> anyway, I've known Pandrea such a long time. I remember him when he was, uh, before he had cards. Who knows, who, how many people know that? Me, this guy, I know. That's how long I've known him. He's got some dope stuff he wants to show you. Yeah, so basically in my lecture, I do a segment called Five Moves in Five Minutes, and basically what I do is moves that I don't particularly use, but I think they're interesting. Their mechanics are interesting, and possibly you could take it further. I think it's important to learn moves like this because the more moves and techniques that you know and you know how your fingers can move, the better you're gonna be with the simple stuff, with the break, with the, you know, even having a, somebody pick a card. Your moves will be more elegant, your sleight of hand will be more finessed. So these are just three simple moves. There's gonna be a palm, a weird way to palm a card, Card, or a way to get an in jog that you could do a control out of, okay. or very flashy, and a color change that uh, I don't use, but I think it's interesting. And if you could put it to use, good on you. So we're gonna get right into the explanation of that right now. <laughs> Alrighty guys, so the first things first is how do we palm off a card in a weird kind of way? It's not really that weird, you could probably get some use out of it. It's gonna be a palm from the bottom, and you're gonna do it under the guise of doing a lapel spread, and sort of rotating it around like this, and then giving out the deck to be shuffled, and you have Tenkai, the palmed card. This is super easy. You don't need to do it on a lapel spread, you can do it on a regular spread, but it's on the natural action. Whether you do a lapel spread or a regular spread, here's how it is. I like the lapel spread because of the way that your hand is situated. Lapal spread here come down square up and this is how your hands are left thumb is over this part right thumb is over this part and if you cover just right they kind of look like knocks <laughs> all right <laughs> now you're gonna swivel around counterclockwise and now you're gonna swivel back around but your right fingertips are gonna contact the bottom card just like that so it's contacting the bottom card and now when you swivel back that's what's gonna happen. Uh, and it's gonna be left right there. So sort of like everything but. Yeah, so from here it's, so spread, you come back, one, two, and that gets just placed right there. So that's your placement. As you move the, right, uh, the left hand away with the deck, your thumb just comes down, grips it like that in a Tenkai kind of palm, and you just kind of come back just like that. Here you go and your card is in here and please shuffle and make sure I don't know where it is. <laughs> and now you can do with this as you please. So that's the little bottom palm that I think is cute. All right guys, so sometimes I like to get an in jog on a card when being placed in the middle of the pack, uh, just to leave time separation between that and the control. If you wanna do a double undercut or a pass or something like that, sometimes you get an in jog and you leave it there for a bit, blah, 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 patter, 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 and then do the control. So here's a weird way to get in jog. You say to the spectator, just say stop anywhere. They go, stop. That's how they sound. And you go four of diamonds. Uh, how many cards do you think are above the four of diamonds? And they go, I don't know. Uh, doesn't matter what they say because you've got an in jog on the card just like that. And then from here, you can cut, get it to the bottom, or you can push down and cut it to the top if you could actually push down on it. <laughs> All right, so how does that work? It's off a flourish that I think Daniel Madison does where he spreads half the deck like this and then he gets it here. I would always do this and I would always get an in jog of a card and I was like, hey, wait a second. So the way that this works is you dribble, you show the card, before placing it back, you put your thumb in there so it kind of creates a separation. Now you're gonna turn your whole hand by pushing your thumb, turn your whole hand like this with your right hand, grab this packet and spread it on the back of your hand. Now one little tip is this card is gonna be, uh, this is a selection, you go how many cards are above your card and as I do this, I touch this and I just in jog it towards myself a little bit, just a little, you don't need to go crazy. So you just touch it like this and now the move is up and down, okay? So you're throwing the cards up and then you're catching it like this, okay? So if you do it right, it should look like here, here, touch it, it's in jogged, come here, and now you it's a little bit of a mess, so you square it, just like that. 
and this card is just gonna stick out like that. And from here, you can do anything you want, push down or lift up and control it anywhere you want. Also, an another tip is that if you come here and you get a bunch of cards being st stuck out, it's always gonna be the bottom card. So at that point, if you can't separate that one from the rest, you could just lift up on it and get a break and you know it's the bottom card. Are you trying to catch it farther back? Uh, what I'm trying to do is just not drop the cards first and foremost. Okay. And also it helps if you do like a smaller spread rather than a really big one. Okay. So now from here, I'm gonna come up and I'm literally gonna open my hand and then square and then square. Gotcha. And then you have this right here. Okay. And see, I could get the separation. So now I could push down and get the break. And I know that from, you know, a double undercut, it could come up to the top. Okay, number three is a color change. Don't really do it, but I think it's interesting. If you get that angle just right, it could be a, a nice visual. So it looks like this. You have the four of diamonds. Watch the four of diamonds. It's going to change into the two of spades. That's that. All right, so for this one, the angles are a little bit sensitive, so you just gotta watch that, keep that in mind. What you're gonna do is do a double lift right here, so you're turning over two cards as one, and let's get a better change here, seven and a queen. You have a double, and you're going to out jog and sort of diagonal jog that card. You're gonna twirl it like that so you have good placement for you to grab the card. What's gonna happen is you're going to place it into a lateral palm position, really, where this corner goes in between the ring finger and the middle finger, middle finger grabs the pip corner your thumb is going to twirl or swirl or swivel or twist whatever you want and it's just going to come up into the same position here and place it on the top okay from here you're going to have to get this here so instead of going all the way with your hand to here you're going to place it about right there okay so it's side jogged and move your hand away slowly now if you get the angles right it should look like from their angle this hand covers this card completely and they see the pip of this. Now to do the reveal, I'm gonna turn my hand down and as I turn my hand down, this is what's gonna happen. My thumb just does this, squares up, and as I come back down, my thumb repositions to the same exact position that it was to make the change and I do it with a snap. So I show the card, move it back, maybe point for a second. This is nice. <laughs> I come here, do this, snap, and then come back like that, okay? I'll be honest, this is something that I don't really use. Maybe I've done it like probably once or twice in performance and it probably flashed. But it's a nice technique to figure out, hey, this card swirl this way, do this, I could use it for this, I could use it for that. And that's really up to you. So I'm giving you this advice as much as I can for you to take it further into your own slights. What the hell are you doing? Are you, you wanna touch? Okay. <laughs> All right, guys, so there you go. That is three things that I, uh, pretty pretty damn dope things in my opinion, that you could do with some cards like these, which I will leave in the description of where you can get these. Go follow him on his social media, his Instagram and his YouTube channel, Alex Panda Paints. Or just you wanna follow me on the street, just like walk behind me and just like follow me. That's also <laughs> okay too. I've had that happen a couple of times. It's like, what are you doing? I'm following you. You said to follow you. You always say follow me, follow me. It's, I don't get it. I mean, I mean, yeah, but on social media, follow him. Don't, don't like run up on him in the street. So go follow him on his stuff. I'll leave the links in the description below for everything. And thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. You like what I'm doing. And tell me some moves that you don't have a use for, but you like to do anyway. I think that's a, right? That's interesting. All right, so peace out, y'all. Thanks.